Well, sitting here on the green in Sharon, overlooking the green, uh, and uh, being next to Town Hall and being close to the uh, Hotchkiss Library in Sharon and just down from that, of course, the Sharon Historical Society, it's a uh, it's nice to see us coming out of the pandemic. It's nice to see more and more things happening all around the tri-state region. And one of those things that is coming up is an upcoming art show uh, for women artists that will open up July 17th and run through August 27th, the Sharon Historical Society. And uh, we're going to be joined right now by Richard Roney uh, Dougal, who's going to join us. So, Richard, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, are you uh, are you on the board of the library, or I, I mean, I've 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 read your uh, I'm going to go over your impressive resume, but uh, uh, you know you've got an art show coming up at at at, at the historical society. Uh, so, how are you associated with this first show that we're talking about, the four women artists? Uh, yeah, I I am on the board, and um, I'm on the gallery committee, uh-huh. and we we run the uh, art side of the. Historical Society. All right, and you know, I think that's a great thing that was added many years ago. And what's interesting about this show, it, uh, like most things, was affected by the COVID nineteen pandemic, but uh, it's right here uh, and coming back. Uh, and it once again starts on on July seventeenth, the show itself. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the four different uh, uh, women artists that are going to be featured in the show, Richard. Uh, yes, we have. Um, they're all. Basically from the area, um, we have Virginia Bradley, who is uh, from Great Barrington. We have Sally Pettis, who lives here in Sharon. Patty Mullins, who also lives here in Sharon. And Danielle Mailer, who is from Goshen, but also teaches art at the Indian Mountain School. Um, they're all... Uh, nationally and internationally recognized women artists of actually very different character and style uh, from whose work yeah, whose work shares a, a strong poetic and imaginative approach that uh, actually makes us think how how interesting it is that you find such diversity within a block that tends to lead, it, lead itself to generalization. When we have a grand event such as the signing of the 19th Amendment, we tend to generalize. So these artists have been selected to be very different characters, very different personalities, but coming together in an overall poetic and imaginative Exhibition. Yeah, the uh, the road to women's suffrage, uh, and uh, I, this has been planned really to celebrate what the hundredth anniversary of the passing of the Nineteenth Amendment. That's right. Yes, it was it was originally planned in conjunction with our historical show, the Road to Suffrage, in the in the museum section of the Historical Society. Uh, because of the pandemic, we have rescheduled it to uh, open on July seventeenth. The original signing of the 19th Amendment was in August of 1920, so we at least we can uh, celebrate that, albeit a year late. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, we, I'll remind people that uh, there is going to be an artist opening reception at the, uh, at the, at the uh, terrace at the Historical Society on Saturday that runs from 5 to 7 p.m. I take it the artists will all be there? Yes, they will, yes. And uh, thank goodness for our terrace, because um, weather permitting, we can hold a reception um, without uh, problems from COVID restrictions. <laughs> We've had a lot of those restrictions over the past two weeks with the rain off and on and on and off. You know, I think with the the Sharon Historical Society, that what you what you mentioned, by the way, uh, once again, we are speaking with Richard Roney Doodle, who... Uh, is on the board of the historical society. I think when you when you break it out, that you're on the side that that develops the art shows, and then there's the historical society. Uh, I think that's what makes uh, the Sharon Historical so unique for for a small historical society. Is you cover the history of Sharon in so many different ways. Yes, and hopefully with the um, art gallery side, we are actually 
covering living history as well. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about you and 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 your painting. You've got you've got a show coming up September fourth through October fifteenth. I know you, you weren't here to blow your own horn, but wh how would you describe yourself as a painter? Uh, well, most of my professional life, I have actually made a living as a goldsmith. Yeah. However, I I studied fine art in London, and I have exhibited my art on several occasions. And I've, I've always kept up with it. So this show is actually um, a retrospective of um, my work, my artwork, extending back to the age of 16. And I will also have uh, a couple of cases of jewelry as well and various other mixed media things that I've pursued throughout my career. Which came first, the uh, the jewelry or, or 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 the more artistic side, the painting portion of it? The painting, definitely, that came first. Um, and I I went to art school. I did a full diploma diploma course uh, in London. And uh, when the when I came to uh, at the end of my studies, um, it was virtually impossible to make a living <laughs> an artist. <laughs> So uh, gradually I moved into the world of uh, jewellery design um, and took it from there. You know, it's interesting because it, you, it, would, it would seem that if, if you're an artist, and uh, no matter what type of uh, artist you are, what your field is, that uh, going into jewellery design really would be something... Uh, that would be just a perfect avenue for you to be creative. And once again, not only to sell jewelry, but also to get people's reaction to your artwork on that jewelry. Yes, yes. And, and they, they relate actually intimately because I study, I specialized in my artwork as um, an etcher and engraver making print. And of course, the engraving is a perfect segue into. Uh, goldsmith, goldsmithing. Well, you've you've obviously uh, lived a pretty uh, wide and varied uh, life dealing with all f forms of art. Uh, do you enjoy, do you enjoy putting these shows together? Is it? I mean, outside of a pandemic coming up and ruining your opening, I mean, uh, do you, do you uh, have a panel that reviews different artists and come up with different ideas for the different shows that you that you present at the historical society? We do indeed. We have a wonderful committee. And um, once a year, we meet to discuss themes. We have uh, we have two or three group shows each year, which are basically a service to the, the community, and uh, we come up with themes for them. And then we also sit around and select uh, individual artists for the year's schedule as well. And that's uh, that's very creative in itself. Well, it's nice to have uh, the option back where we can see these different shows once again uh, opening up uh, on July 17th and running till August 27th at the Sharon Historical Society. Once again, uh, the uh, four female artists, four women artists, uh, the road to women's suffrage. And there is uh, a uh, meet and greet reception at the Sharon Historical Society Terrace this Saturday the 17th from 5 until 7 p.m. And then once again, I'll put a little plug in for you, Richard. Your show runs September 4th through October 15th. Uh, thanks for joining us today here on, on Robin Hood Radio, Richard, and uh, uh, a successful opening for this next show coming up on uh, this weekend. Good, and thank you for your coverage from, from the All right. Historical Society. All right, take care. Uh, the Sharon Historical Society and uh, their show, which is opening up uh, this weekend. Uh, and uh, you can find out more information uh, at uh, SharonHist.org on the web.